this has almost a longer title than the poem itself. Uh, it's called Flies So Thick Above the Corpses in the Rubble, the Soldiers Must Use Flamethrowers to Pass Through. And the little roasted flies fall into the ruins too, and more flies come, shoe, fly, shoe, until there's nothing for them to come to anymore. Nothing but sky, blankety blank, blank, blank sky. <laughs> Primo Levi, uh, the great Italian writer, uh, is one of my favorite writers, and one of my favorite books is a. Uh, uh, Escape from Auschwitz. It's sometimes the title is translated uh, differently, but he was an Italian Jew who uh, spent a year or so in uh, in Auschwitz and survived. So this <coughs> poem is an elegy for him. It's called 174517 Primo Levi, an elegy. The number was his uh, the number tattooed on his arm. It's dedicated to a friend of mine, and uh, uh, him and his wife occur in this poem. His name is Michael Ryan. It's a prose poem, too. I hadn't written a prose poem in about 25 uh, years, but recently wrote a couple of them. Primo Levi, an elegy. I thought Jews were just another denomination. Episcopalians, Methodists, Jews, Catholics, Lutherans, etc. I knew Hitler hated Jews. I know I hated Hitler. I was a child. The name of our parish was St. Philip's. I had no idea who St. Philip's was. In confirmation class, I was asked the name of a Jewish cleric, and I said, a rabbit. I like to play with words. I like to read words. I like the sound of words in novels and poems and history books. I like to read sentences. I read and read. I did other things, too, but I read hundreds and hundreds of books. Many years passed. One day, my friend said to me, you should read this book. He read a lot of books, too. He said he and his wife were reading your book aloud to each other every night. They lived deep in the country in a farmhouse on a red hill. They were very broke during those years, reading your book aloud to each other. When they finally got a little money, they moved, and my friend said he felt compelled as they were leaving the house for the last time to open the cabinet beneath the kitchen sink. Wrapped around the drain pipe was a long, thick, gray snake trying to warm himself. I read your book, and I read it aloud, too, in my own lonely house. I read it for myself, for my friends, and for that snake. And this is why I'm writing to you now, though you no longer have an address, to tell you. I read your book. I read your book. If you ever do see that book. It's a great book. This is called Monkey Butter. Monkey Butter. It's a kind of, uh, 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 what do you call it, aphrodisiac kind of thing uh, in, that, in that ballpark. I, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <coughs> yes, I could. Monkey butter's tasty, tasty. You put it in cookies and pie. You mix it in cake. I can't tell you a lie. Don't be light with it, nor hasty to push it aside. It's not too sweet with a light banana e hue. The monkeys all love it, and so will the one you call you, the you who's another you want to love you. Put it in his pudding, in her pastry puff, then sweep aside the table of all that other stuff. Later, leave a little in his left, her right, shoe. <laughs> Try it. And I'm going to finish with this poem called Render, Render. I'm playing off the idea of the rendering plant, you know, the glue factory, uh, uh, where all the... Uh, dead roadkill and pets go and stuff like that, uh, the glue factory. But uh, we, we use the products, uh, or, or what this stuff all gets boiled down to, in lots of products, lots of different products. In fact, uh, many of you today are wearing uh, on your faces or, or, or lips uh, 
it's, you know, a boiled down, run over puppy uh, uh, somewhere. Uh, it's a poem that's also trying to be a kind of ars poetica, a, a statement about uh, the art form of poetry. Render, render. It's all one sentence. It's, all, it's about 30 lines, but I have to kind of start and, uh, and read it through almost in one, one breath. Render, render. Boil it down. Feet, skin, gristle, bones, vertebrae, heart muscle. Boil it down. Skim and boil again. Dreams, history, add them and boil again. Boil and skim in closed cauldrons. Boil your horse, his hooves, the runned over dog you love, the girl by the pencil sharpener who looked at you, looked away. Boil that for hours. Render it down. Take more from the top as more settles to the bottom, the heavier, the denser. Throw in ache and sperm and a bead of sweat that slid from your armpit to your waist as you sat stiff back before a test. Turn up the fire, boil and skim, boil some more. Add a fever and the virus that blinded an eye. Now's the time to add guilt and fear. Throw logs on the fire, coal, gasoline. Throw two goldfish in the pot. They're swim bladders used for clearing, boil and boil, render it down and distill, concentrate that for which there is no other use at all. Boil it down, down, then stir it with rose water, that which is now one dense, fatty, scented red essence which you smear on your lips and go forth to plant as many kisses upon the world as the world can bear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. that bit of information there didn't make anybody want to give up lip wearing lipstick. <laughs> <laughs>